Hey guys, did you know that you can get more Airbnb bookings any time of the year with one simple update to your listing? Open up your computer and follow along so you can make this change right now as I explain it to you. You could even call this a trick because 90% of hosts don't know about this. And believe me, I've talked to thousands of hosts. This is true. And this one trick can be accomplished four different ways. Some are easier, some are harder, so pick the one that works best for you. I'm going to show you four techniques and let me know if by the end you can tell what the trick is because if you can tell the trick before the end of the video, let me know that you accomplished that in the comments. At this very moment, looking at your Airbnb listing, I want you to think of it like a checkout page for any other product maybe even more like an Amazon product. The reason why is there are thousands of Amazon products and they have to click on your product to get to your page, much like Airbnb. And once they land on your product or listing, that page needs to be sticky. Apple made up the phrase sticky, actually. And what sticky means is that somebody lands and they don't leave. Or if you have an iPhone, you don't switch back to Android. It's when somebody stays with you for a long time. This is the first of a few funnel terms in this video. Visit duration, which is how long someone spends on your Airbnb listing. If you are new to the concept of funnels or conversion percentage, don't worry. I have made a PDF to help you better understand this lingo and how to use it in your Airbnb business. The link is in the description. I'll probably even pin a comment for you. Go down there, download it, and you can use it later. Data shows that the longer someone spends on your listing page or product page, the more likely they are to convert to a sale. If you increase visit duration, you increase conversion percentage. How about that? I wonder if there's a correlation between the amount of time that somebody spends on a YouTube video and their likelihood of subscribing to the person who made that video. Let me know how that one goes. This relationship sounds easy enough, right? No, almost every Airbnb host on the planet doesn't understand why someone isn't hitting checkout on their listing once someone lands on their page. I mean, my listing's awesome, it's a no-brainer, right? If your conversion percentage is under 3%, Watch this whole video because there's a few things that you should be doing and you can find your conversion percentage on the insights tab of your dashboard on the Airbnb platform. I believe you can find it on the mobile as well, not just on the dashboard. And now there is a roadmap for this video. Four steps, get someone on your listing, get them to stay on your listing, get them to build confidence and hopefully urgency, and then to take action on the next step, which may not actually be a booking and that's okay. First, let's get you more clicks. And one for me too, maybe the like button. I've seen tens of thousands of listings and it's always just one of a few things that keeps people from getting clicked. The first is that the guest cannot find your listing, literally, and it's not a shadow ban thing. It's either buried in the algorithm or it's not showing up in search. The most basic thing that you can do right now is just complete your listing. Most people don't know that Airbnb created their create a listing section to have as little resistance as possible. They want a new host to click as few buttons as possible to get live. That is their way of getting host adoption, but they only complete about a third of the profile when you do that. If you did that and published your listing and never went back, you're missing two thirds of your listing. One of the biggest ones is there's this amenities checklist that you should fill out. There are also extra text boxes that you should fill out. Weekend prices, length of stay discounts, all sorts of things, including when somebody should check out, check in and check out times. The more you complete, the more Airbnb can use to drive you up in their search rank. You may not show up in search because your prices are all wrong for the season, but we're going to revisit that later in this video. You could literally not be showing up in search for the silliest of reasons. And and this happens to so many hosts. One of the very first things that I have an experienced host do when they join my mentorship program is to do what I'm asking you to do right now. Go to Airbnb and search as a traveler. I want you to zoom in on the map until the number on the top left is no longer 1000 plus. Do this somewhere populated if you want really good results because there's more listings, you can see the data better. Get that map to show a listing count between 100 and 700 listings, something like that for a two night stay, Friday and Saturday night. I want you to search again, but let's add Sunday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and reload the results. Same map view, same area. And all of a sudden, there are more listings available than when you searched for two nights. Curious, isn't it? This is a big deal, because if someone was searching on Airbnb under I'm flexible for any weekend, that any weekend option is a two-day stay. Any hosts that have a three-night minimum length of stay 
do not show up in Friday, Saturday only searches. Finding alternative ways to get longer lengths of stay without relying on a two day minimum is the moral of the story here because this is a great example of how a minimum length of stay directly affects your listing in search results. For the sake of your ranking on Airbnb, you wanna maximize results, especially in crunch time like slow season. You cannot afford to not be seen under any circumstances. If you love that setting and you wanna fight me on the three day minimum, at least change that using a software like Wheelhouse or Channel Manager so inside of 30 or 45 days, you can drop that to two. Just don't hold that setting forever because in that last minute environment, you cannot afford to choose three night minimums when you need the bookings. A full calendar is one of the best ways to get your ranking up. Another reason you may not be getting clicked is your listing just looks uninteresting. It is boring. Sorry, when your listing appears in search, you get one thumbnail photo, your property type is listed, you get the total price, your title, and your review score, and that's it. Today, I had a coaching session with Andrew from Miami. He has two high-rise condo units and he's having a hard time getting booked. And one of his main problems, aside from a few photos that he had on his listing, which we can talk about later too, is that his title was all wrong. What you need to understand is that your title is no longer a title. Your title is actually a subtitle. The part that is bold is the property type. And then in regular text below that goes your title. All of the very best hosts in Miami have already figured this out. You need to change your title to be heavy duty on the amenities that you have. You need to list your rare amenities. If you're just steps to the beach, or if you have a king bed, or free parking, or a hot tub, or whatever else makes your place amazing, that needs to be your title. More than some cool name like the Seashell House. No one cares that you named your house the Seashell House. They care if you have free parking and a hot tub. The one that matters the most is your thumbnail. It's the largest part of the spread. It gets the most space on Airbnb, so it needs to stand out against your competition. What I'm saying is one photo might be a perfect hero photo for where you are, but if you go 500 miles away to somewhere else, that same hero photo is not what people want to see, and you'll have to change it. A good looking photo is far from the answer to what should be in a hero photo. To discover what works best for you, I want you to look up your competition. Map search into your area and find five or seven direct competitors that could steal your business. I want you to look at their hero photos and then choose a color scheme that's unique, that pops out compared to them. I want you to list a rare amenity that they don't have. And overall, make sure that that one photo makes them want to see more. Don't give up the ghost on your first photo. For example, a really good outdoor photo makes people wonder what's inside the house. It's perfect clickbait to get people to choose your listing. And you know what? I just found out something new. First time ever, this is really cool. I think all of us hosts suspect this, but Airbnb has AI that tracks images and then tracks people's relationships to those images. I think it's how they find categories, but they're using it now to find out what people are clicking on. Just a few days ago, after I had recently searched for cabins on Airbnb, the next time I loaded their dashboard, they showed me nothing but a bunch of cabins all with snow on the ground, specifically snow in all of the photos. It was nuts. It was either an indoor photo or cabins with snow. There is no way that that can happen unless Airbnb intentionally was recognizing snow in the photos and putting them on their dashboard. Airbnb is using AI to find trending hero photos. That's nuts. It's really cool, but it's nuts. What that means is Airbnb is more like an explore page and all of the cabins that normally would land on the first page, if they did not update their hero photo to have snow, they'd be left out in the cold. Please don't click off for that pun, but in summary, Airbnb is an interest algorithm is truly tracking everybody's interests in real time. And now with these changes, you should be clickable. And I have a caveat for you on the title. I realize I told you to put your best and most rare amenities in the title, but there are some exceptions. If you're pet friendly or smoker friendly, you don't want to list things like that because a lot of guests don't trust Airbnb's cleanliness and it will be hard to convince them to click on your listing if there's something listed that makes them believe that something about your home could be unpleasant just by nature. So they would rather just skip you and avoid the heartache to avoid having pet hair on their trip. If you didn't list it in the title, they wouldn't have noticed, but you advertising it gave them fear. And trust and confidence is going to be a big part of the next step of getting somebody through the funnel. So keep that in mind as we move forward. There's a man here in Dallas named Tim. He's one of my newest students. He's been watching my channel since 2019, taking in all of my free content, and he's making more than a million dollars a year now as a host. Good for Tim, but 
On his very first coaching call, we quickly realized that he had a long way to go and photos was the primary area where his listing was lacking. The very first thing that someone sees when they click on your listing on a desktop, which is still where a lot of people do their search, is your first five photos. It's like a highlight reel kind of like collage setup one big photo and then four small ones next to it. And lo and behold, over 90% of listings are not optimized for this. Most of them take a real estate home tour approach where your first photo is your hand selected hero photo because Airbnb asks for that. And then the rest of the photos are listed in the order that the photographer took them. So you've got three or four living room photos in a row. That looks boring. It adds no value. The customer landing on your page has not been rewarded for their click. You want that page to load and have it be the best possible looking page that you can get it to look like with the limited resources that you have. In this way, I want you to consider that your listing has five hero photos, your very first hero photo, and then four other absolute bangers that look good together. So when someone searches on desktop, they see your best five. There's going to be an outdoor photo. There's going to be a living room photo. If your best stuff's a kitchen or a hot tub or your master bedroom or a bathtub with a gigantic soaking tub, whatever it is, put the top five and then photo number six, you can start your tour after that, which means I suggest you manually order your photos and then don't use the categorization section, rooms and spaces that Airbnb asks you to put the photos into. I am confident that that feature is bad for the funnel approach we're trying to build in your listing. Per my last email on photography, trim the fat. You do not need four living room photos. If you have two photos that give enough information, if the third and fourth photo don't do enough to get the customer excited or better informed about your property, don't include the photo. You want to look at every photo and ask, is this new? And is this exciting? And if it's not both, put it in the trash bin, control delete. There is a place that you need more photos. Again, today I had a new student with a beautiful listing and he says in his listing text, there's this redesigned kitchen you're going to love with a breakfast nook, but he had no photos of the kitchen. You could see the kitchen in the background, but that was it. Every kitchen needs three or four solid photos to make sure that people know that you have everything that they want because some travelers like to cook at home. And if you have a full kitchen with spices and pots and pans, you need to show it in your photos. If they do not see it in your funnel, they're not gonna know it's there. So get an up close shot of the kitchen with the pots and the pans on the stove as if someone's about to cook, cutting board next to the stove, knife on the cutting board, spices right next to the cutting board. Set that thing up like it's product photography, not real estate photography. Open up the fridge, show this big clean fridge with a Brita water filter in there or the water filter on the front door next to it. Show that. Make sure that your kitchen is decorated so it has pops of color when you take your photos and take a hyper up close version of your coffee station and you know what I'm going to say about decaf and tea. One out of three drinks decaf or tea Memorize that, take that to the bank. And the reason why all of this is so important, my friends, is six out of 10 guests go straight to the photos when they click on a listing. They don't read your description, they don't look at your reviews, they may be sold or unsold on photos alone. So if you don't do this right, 60% of the guests, you're not optimized for. So you can write that you have a hot tub, you can write that your kitchen is awesome, you could write that you're on the top of a waterfall and Bruce Springsteen is your neighbor, but if they don't see Bruce Springsteen at the top of that waterfall in a photo, they're not going to know it because they're not reading your text. Speaking of, there are more ways to keep someone on your listing once they get down there, through proper writing. When you write your description, I want you to use the word you about four times more than you think that you should. This is called writing in second person. When you arrive to the property, you will find blank in the driveway and you will experience this and you will see this. You will love this. You, you, you. The person number is two. And I also want you to use active language. It's one of the ways that I get to keep you on a video like this is I talk to you not with yeses and maybes and in the future you mights, but action, certainty right now. You can do this today. You can hit that subscribe button. That's active language. And speaking of buttons, the customer is ready to hit checkout. So they go to check availability and boom, they see it, your $400 cleaning fee. And that's where you lose them again. This does not need a long, boring explanation. You've seen it all over the news. People are upset about cleaning fees. What I can tell you though, is there's something called cart abandon percentage. Another one of those terms that's in the PDF down below. When someone is surprised by a fee that is large enough compared to the original price that they were expected to pay, they become offended. And I know a lot of you hosts like to use the size of the cleaning fee as a way to keep someone from booking a one night or two night stay. 
But because this industry is more and more efficient every year, and I'm teaching people to hire housekeepers for $15 and $17 an hour, and their housekeeping fees are lower than yours, that protective cleaning fee is now what's causing you to have what we call a bounce rate, a cart abandoned percentage, because people don't like your fee size. There is a way to do this if your cleaning fee is still really high because your expenses are high for now. Drop your cleaning fee to meet the market, look at your competition, meet the market, add the rest of what it costs you to a management fee. It will hide that from the guest. Airbnb will roll that into the nightly rate. So your $400 cleaning fee is now two, but that 200 bucks goes to the nightly rate. So instead of seeing $300 for a two night stay each night, they'll see $400 for a two night stay each night, and then they'll see a $200 cleaning fee. So $800 of nightly rate and $200 of cleaning fee is better than $300 of nightly rate and $400 of cleaning fee. I want to encourage you to get brave and hire your housekeepers for 15, 17, $20 per hour. Not only will it not backfire, but for my students in winter season, it has been the crucial element of their success. Having a better cost structure allows them to be more cost competitive when it really matters. Their calendars are full when everyone else's are not. Their cost of cleaning directly affects what they can charge per night. It's a key element of their pricing strategy. And if you're done spending years as an Airbnb host not actually understanding how pricing works and you're done having three or four hard months a year and you're ready to treat this like a business and not a hobby, then down below is a link to contact my team. Find out if now is actually the time for you to work with me in my mentorship program. I can teach you everything that you need to know. So talk to my team about what your plans are in 2024 and see if I fit, if I can help you outside of the free content that I hope is already helping you. There are seven coaches in that program, not just myself, making it the biggest and most hands-on mentorship program ever created on the planet. We have coaches that are pedigreed in accounting, business formation and credit, interior design, operations, leadership, management, stuff that I know because I'm a coach, whatever I know, I'm in there. It is the largest and most hands-on coaching program in the industry by a margin. No one else comes even close. More information down below. And finally, if everything is right, your listing is perfect. Guests are still anxious. They're still non-committal. They can't decide. There is a way that you can beat every single host at this point in time with just a few simple words. You're going to use calls to action. It's another term in the PDF down below. A CTA gets somebody to do something next when they don't know what to do next. A confused buyer doesn't do anything. They freeze up. So if they're looking at this wonderful listing and they're looking at another wonderful listing and they're on the fence, they've got three browsers open looking at listings and they're like, oh, these are all so good. If your listing says, send me a message for a seasonal discount or send me a message to inquire about hot tub hours or send me a message about the extra stuff that we can do during your stay X, Y, or Z or send us a message for partnership deals or military discount or whatever. You say, send us a message and they're going to send you a message. And this is another step forward in the funnel. If you want to be brave and go for the big win, you can write book now, book today. You can do that. But instead, Airbnb does reward messages in their ranking system. It's part of the way that they track the funnel. So if somebody messages you and then books, great. If someone messages you and then does not book, it's still better than them not booking and not messaging you. Find unique reasons why someone could message you. This is the part that you can be very much like me. I grew up in sales. I sold newspaper subscriptions for 10 years to people who did not want them. I sold Generation Z newspaper subscriptions. And I can tell you the power of persuasion is real. If you have someone in your inbox and you're messaging back and forth, they can start to like you. They can start to trust you and you can say things that get them to take action to book your place. The art of actively selling your Airbnb happens in the message thread. By the time you see this video, there will be a webinar going on. You've seen it before. It's called Realgorithm. I do it every year after Brian Chesky does his winter release. And this winter release has crushed hosts once again, it's been terrible for a lot of people and their calendars are empty. If you want to know everything about how the Airbnb algorithm works, so you're never left out in the cold after a winter release or a summer release, or when your listing just stops performing, if you want to never have a bad listing ever again, attend my webinar, Realgorithm. There will be a link in the description, in the comments, on my website, 
I'll be doing it live and answering questions. If you attend, I will answer yours. If you can't attend, you can have the replay. Don't worry, you won't miss it if you miss it. And if you liked this video and understanding that six out of every 10 guests look at the photos, this next video on the 10 things that you need inside of your Airbnb property is going to be particularly valuable on your journey as an Airbnb host. So watch this video next or watch this video on the 10 hacks that you can use to get more Airbnb bookings. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. You stay till the end. You're my favorite people. And as always, I will see you on the other side.